एच आई एम टी हिंदुस्तान इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मैरिड टाइम ट्रेनिंग This part is about um, inertia, okay? Inertia in inertia in uh, mechanical systems, and how inertia is linked to storage of energy. And you will see similar principles in other systems also, not only in mechanical systems. You will see the connection. It starts with this. There is this uh, Newton's. First law is this. Newton's first law says that an object will remain at uh, state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted on by another force. Like, but the, the property which it introduces is called inertia. This nature is called inertia. This inertia means it doesn't want to change. Not wanting to change is the simple meaning of inertia. Then inertia is measured by uh, mass of the object. Like if you say inertia is a property, every property should have some way to measure it. And how do you measure inertia for um, uh, motion like this? This kind of motion is called translational. Translation means position is changing. Rotation is also that is also called translation. So any kind of uh, translational motion, inertia is measured by uh, mass m. For uh, this way, rotating about one axis, not changing place, you are rotating about <coughs> one axis. For that, the inertia is by the second moment of mass. So for uh, this kind of motion, you will say mass is the measure of inertia. For this kind of rotation, you say this value i, which we call as i. i is the value of inertia. This is the first part. Second part is, uh, second law of uh, Newton says force will be equal to the rate of change of momentum. You can write like this. It is momentum uh, is mass into velocity. So you write this way. Uh, d m a by d t, then you write m d u by d t. Finally, you write this formula force equals uh, mass into acceleration because of this formula uh, everybody is used to writing in every context in every context we say if we what is force every context people will say if you say what is force they will only say mass into acceleration but in reality this is not the complete equation there is something else also will be there this is only one part. What is the third law telling? Third law says that uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Every action, every force as an action will have an equal and opposite reaction. Then if you look at it this way, what is the meaning of this? If this is what I am applying, then what is this m into a? Reaction. Reaction will be in what direction? So, so, so it again means something like this that uh, a property of inertia is to oppose. That's the meaning. It doesn't want to change. Oppos opposition is always opposite. That is the meaning. Now, if you try, if I try to do like this, inertia is opposed. But this is not the complete equation. In, in practical application, this is not the complete equation. What is the complete equation? You start from this principle that every force will be, every applied force, at every time, applied force will be equal, equal to opposing force, opposite force. 
I apply so much force, there will be an opposite force. This is the meaning of the third law. But the opposite force is not only due to inertia, it is due to other factors also. Okay. So, one of the opposing forces is inertial force. It is only one part. There are other forces also. Apart from inertia of force, there are other forces. What will be the other forces? How do you write the inertia force? In, for the inertia force alone, you write you will write mass into acceleration. For inertia force alone, you write mass into acceleration. What are the other opposing forces? That can be any kind of force which opposes motion. Very often it is friction. So you write frictional force. Frictional force will be there. And what are the other forces? Apart from frictional force, there will be there will be force which is part of the work being done or energy getting transferred. Force, force related to force related to work done. So, so because application of force will also result in some work getting done. Sometimes this will be zero, but very often it will be zero. So the example to all together it becomes like this. So when will it be only this when these two are zero? Right? And whenever any motion takes place at constant velocity, what will happen then? Anything happens at constant velocity, actually it will be zero. So for constant velocity, this becomes, this whole part becomes zero. And you are left with only this. Applied force will be equal to these forces. So very often, any object moves at uh, constant velocity, you will only see this is equal to this part. So you take a example of a compressor. Easy example is like a compressor piston. The piston of a compressor is moving like this. So this part, suppose when you when you apply a force, the piston is moving up, and the piston is moving up, what is the force being applied right now? At this point, what is the force being applied right now? If you write the value for the force, one part will be the inertia force. That will be m into k. What is the second part? All the friction which is opposing the motion. But there is one more force. That is this part. That is the pressure, pressure of the air acting on the distance. area of the piston that also will be pressure into <coughs> so at any given instant this is the um, applied force this is the total opposing force that is, that is what the third law is at any given instant this will be the case with this uh, applied force, if there is a small movement of dx, that means the piston is moving by a small distance dx, then force into dx will be work done. It is a, it is a small amount of small amount of work done. It will be force into dx. That will be equal to uh, m into a into dx. And second will be the friction force into dx. And third will be P into A into dx. P into A into dx. This is this part. Out of this, 
what happens with this prime? The, the, the work you did in overcoming friction will turn into heat. It will turn into heat and it will go away. This part, here also you have done work. The, the purpose of this work was to move the mass. This is the work done to overcome inertia. Where does this go? This part of work. This will not go anywhere. This will be stored in the mass. This much energy is always stored in the mass. That is why any form of inertia always means energy will be stored. And stored energy will become available in a different position for a different time during motion. But energy gets stored. And what is this part of the work for? It is this part of the work which becomes energy for the uh, air. For the air. This, this part becomes energy for the uh, air. Energy stored in the air. <coughs> what is P A into dx? No, no. A into dx. If you rewrite this part, if you rewrite this part, how do you write? A into P into A into dx will be written as P into uh, small change in volume. So if the piston moves from here to here, there will be a change in volume. So P into change in volume is the is the work which is done for the compression. Then if you, if this is for a small value, this is for the compression work alone, not the entire part, other two parts are removed. This part alone, if you write, it will be like this. Then if you want to measure for the full compression stroke, then what do you have to do? You have to integrate. So that's why when you integrate it, when you integrate the whole thing, it becomes integral of this. So in, in a diagram called diagram like a PV diagram, the PV diagram, if you compress like this, this is P, V, and DV means a small strip, like this, and integration of P, DV means, graphically what does it mean? Means the area. So, so that is how that is how we get the relation that uh, area under a PV PV diagram becomes a work done on the medium. If it is if it is a compressor or if it is an engine, principle is similar. That is how it be. <coughs> so, so there is this this equation is not just force equals uh, mass into acceleration. It is mass into acceleration plus other other things. <coughs> Similarly, if you write for torque, how will you write? Force into the resistance. If you write the same way for torque, if you say applied torque, applied torque is the work done. So the force into the resistance. Yeah, but say, see, again you have to start with inertia. And inertia for rotation is not mass. Inertia for rotation is I. So it will be I into in place of A will come alpha, alpha, angular, angular. alpha angular acceleration. So you will write angular acceleration which is D omega by DT angular acceleration. Plus other opposing terms. This is one opposing term, other opposing term. Any 
again friction will come and energy transfer part will come energy part work done part will come so you have here also friction to create a opposing torque and the work done part will create or the energy transfer part will create one more torque so so if a, if a motor is driving a pump motor creates the which torque motor creates the <laughs> applied torque while it is running at steady condition steady rpm this part will become zero right so whatever torque the motor is generating will be for overcoming this part so just like it happened with the compressor a small part goes for overcoming the friction rest of it is the one which is doing the work so if you are driving a pump where did all the energy of the motor go it is in the transfer of energy to the liquid the liquid is taking so much energy and going like this this is the way to know so start with this principle that inertia is storage and uh, any kind of storage what is the benefit of storing something any kind of storage will help you to uh, even not fluctuation when something changes you can uh, reduce fluctuation so the flywheel is an example so we always say flywheel has got uh, ability to store energy why it is of benefit is that when the torque is fluctuating or the available energy is fluctuating because the flywheel stores energy it can even out rotation so logic is if if the if you write the equation once again how will you write applied torque equals i into alpha plus all the other opposing torque other opposing torque friction and work done part if if a <coughs> motor is driving a compressor the torque of the motor will be steady more or less steady motor is driving a compressor this will be more or less steady but this part will not be steady this will keep changing because of piston movement is not steady pressure on top of the air is not steady so this part can never be steady so you are going to have a continuous variation that this part this part cannot match so if these two parts are not matching this cannot be zero when will this be zero constant yeah true but but for for this to be zero these two values must be same equal but in a in a condition of a motor driving a air compressor these two will never be matching on the time so your this cannot be zero this cannot be zero means acceleration is always there the result of that is rpm will not be Change. RPM keeps on going up and down. So you you have a certain amount of difference in torque. So, uh, if you think applied torque is steady, but the opposing torque is fluctuating, if you have like this, then for this much of uh, fluctuation, fluctuation if I increase I, what will be the benefit? But the fluctuation is there in torque. But if you increase the value of I, like like you can rewrite the same equation this way. You can write like this: I into alpha will be equal to applied torque minus 
other opposing terms like other opposing terms so this is a value so if this value is large this difference is large this is also going to be large but for any particular value of this if you say if we take a difference in torque value of 50 kilo uh, 50 newton meter if you say like this then if i value is 50 how much will this be this will be 1 but instead of 50 if i increase i to 5000 The change in torque is same, actuation in torque is same. This is still 50, but for the for the same 50 fluctuation in torque, 50 uh, newton meter torque. If I value is increased, what is the benefit? Actually, the value of alpha will become uh, less. It becomes less. So this value becomes one by hundred. One by hundred. That is the principle. So, so the more you increase i, less will be alpha, and the change in RPM will be less. The same logic will apply in other systems also. So, from this, you can see connections to other systems, and in terms of energy. So, uh, moving mass has got uh, inertia. Inertia is the property of moving mass. So, what is the energy formula for that? For a moving mass, you will say kinetic energy for a moving mass will be half into m into v square. Kinetic energy for a rotating of like this. Revolving object like this. In case for alpha, what does that? It is half into inertia for translation motion is m. Sir, r only. For v equal to r only. So that is different. So, uh, this is kinetic for linear motion. This is going to rotate, but you will not write m here. You have to write i. In place of m should be i, second moment of mass, and in place of v should be omega. This is for kinetic uh, energy of rotation. Just now for the tube light we talked about uh, the choke, right? Ballast as a storage device. So for an inductive coil. What is the formula of energy which is stored? Is one by two into L into I square, where L is the inductance. So, so L is the inertia for coil. Uh, If you have a capacitor, capacitor also will store energy. And the formula for that is one by two c into v square. Does the spring store energy? What is the formula for this? Energy stored in a spring. It is half into k into x square. Where k is called Constant, constant, constant. Okay, and what will be x? X is the displacement. How much is this being uh, compressed or stressed? So you will see a very, very uh, common pattern throughout in all of them. So all these represent inertia. So for for in the case of a spring, this is minimum inertia. In the case of a capacitor. This is, even though we use the word inertia for mechanical system, the principle is the same. It applies here also. So here also. Here also. 
and the important thing to understand is this inertia is deliberately introduced into the system because it has got some benefits. So you are fitting a flywheel for the sake of no, for the sake of reducing uh, fluctuation in RPM. In applications where the torque is not steady, torque is not steady, but the RPM will be almost steady. That is that is the reason we use this. There are electrical systems where similar functioning is done. You think of this LC circuit as a filtering circuit that you can use an inductance coil or you can use a capacitor for filtering. What is the meaning of filtering? That if you, if you are turning uh, AC to DC, then the ripples in the voltage and current can be removed by DC. Once again, it is the same principle. But you must also remember, since energy is stored by these devices, there is a very important safety principle. That, that since inertia means storage of energy, even when the plants are shut down, you can have energy stored in them. That is the part you have to be careful of. So I have a capacitor which is taken out of cycle, but it can still have Charge. energy stored in it. A compressed spring will have a lot of energy. Compressed or spring under tension can have a lot of energy. So this should not lead to a, an accident. Yeah, same thing, air in the reservoir also. Compressed air has got a lot of energy. That can lead to an accident. So, look at it from this point also. Basically, two main points to keep in mind that inertia means storage. And the concept of inertia is not only for mechanical system, it applies to other systems as well. And wherever it, it is introduced, it will have a its main role is in reducing changes and also in cases for storing energy. You can even have, uh, actually there are electrical um, UPS system, that means um, like uh, normally if you think of UPS, what do you think of? Battery storage. There are, there are actually flywheel based UPS systems, are you aware? Developing states. No, it's already there. Flywheel based UPS systems are also there. That means uh, it will be uh, very heavy inertial masses, flywheels, small flywheels, uh, rotated and they keep on rotating and that's the way they are. Once the power goes off, what will happen? The flywheel continue to rotate and during the time the flywheel is rotating, energy is available from it. That type of systems are also there.